Hey there, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a recipe that is a result of some criticism that I got from my brother Adam, um, who was watching my uh, jalapeno, pickled jalapenos video. And he was disappointed because I kind of just blew past the cheese sauce portion and I ended up using like a jar of cheese. Um, but the video was on jalapenos, which it clearly was labeled, um, but uh, I get it, you know, I kind of waved it off as if everyone knows how to make a roux and make a cheese sauce. Um, maybe I'll do cheese one of these days. Um, it's easy, just make a roux and then add cheese and milk and that's about it. Anyways, um, so today I'm gonna be making a nacho cheese sauce, kind of a basic nacho cheese sauce. I'm gonna use cheddar as the base, but you can use anything um, that you would like. Also gonna add a little cayenne pepper to that. And we're gonna start it with a roux, and it takes, I don't know, five to seven minutes. It's pretty quick. One quick note, um, use block cheese when you do this. Don't use uh, shredded cheese in a bag. Shredded cheese has a, an anti-caking agent on it. It's called cellulose, and it's uh, the powdery stuff that keeps the cheese from clumping up into a big, wet, you know, sticky mass of cheese. But that basically will not emulsify into a, a roux um, like, like you'll see that, that this cheese will. So it is very important that whatever cheese, cheese that you use, uh, you grate it fresh and don't use pre-shredded. Um, so this one's for you, Adam. This one's also for Cooper, who uh, watches all my videos. What's up, my man? I love you, Cooper. Cooper's my nephew, um, and it means so much that you watch my videos. So thank you. So these nachos are for you, Adam, and you, Cooper. I hope you guys like them, and I hope you try them. Check it out. We're gonna use eight ounces of cheese, and this is a medium cheddar. Don't use a sharp cheddar. Uh, for whatever reason, sharp cheddar has the tendency to um, kind of coagulate and not really blend as easily as a medium cheddar. And I'm not sure why, but I read that a lot. So apparently don't use sharp cheddar. There we go, beautiful soft. Sticky cheese, no anti-caking agents in here. This is ready to go into some roux, so let's do it. Okay, for a roux, we've done these in the past, I think with my uh, lasagna video, I did, oh, did I do lasagna? I didn't do lasagna. I made roux, I don't know that I've made roux before. Yes, I did. No, I this isn't a joke, I truly forgot. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I will teach you how to make roux right now. A roux is uh, a fat with uh, flour that you cook out equal parts, and it's the base of a lot of sauces. Basically, um, you cook it out, and it turns kind of blonde and eventually darker into brick, you know, deeper colors if you're making gumbo and all these other things, but we're just gonna bring it up to a, a blonde medium roux and then add in um, one cup of whole milk. And then once that kind of comes up to heat and it'll, it'll start to all thicken up, then we're gonna kill the heat. We're gonna stir in our cheese. It's gonna be done. So that was the longest winded way of telling you how to do a roux. But it starts with two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour. So let's do it. Medium heat. You could let the butter melt first and then throw your flour in, but it doesn't really matter. But you wanna whisk it all together. And it's important that you cook this long enough to cook out the flour. You don't want a raw flour flavor to your roux. So as you can see, kinda of got everything incorporated. Now we're just gonna cook it out probably two minutes, two to four minutes, until this starts to kind of bubble up a little bit and turn into a nice blonde color. 
you don't want to leave this for too long without stirring it, so it can burn pretty easily. It also starts to get kind of a nutty smell to it as the flour cooks out. It's starting to bubble. So we're about there. That's good color. I like it. It's been about three minutes, probably three, four minutes. I'm going to go ahead and add in eight ounces of whole milk, which is like half of this. And you can stir this in. If you do it in batches like this, you can kind of keep it creamy. So at this point, we just poured it in, it's pretty much just milk. However, as the milk heats up and as the roux kind of activates in there, this is going to turn into a more uh, creamy sauce. So this is like really a bechamel at this point, once, we're, once we bring this up to temperature. Okay, so as you can see, a couple minutes later and we've got this nice creamy bechamel sauce. So, This is the base to a lot of other sauces. Um, you can add a lot of things into this. I'm gonna turn this down. I'm almost going to thin this out a little bit more. Because the cheese sauce itself shouldn't be super thick. It should be kind of cheese sauce-like. All right, so now we're gonna whisk in that cheese, then we're done. All right, and I can tell I want it still, it's nice that it ribbons, but I've got more cheese to add. I'm still gonna want it. It's gonna thicken up every time you add cheese, so. I'm gonna get ahead of that and kind of thin this out a little bit. And really all I'm comparing this to is just my memory when I've had cheese sauce in the past. So there's no magic formula, but you kind of know what nacho cheese should look and feel like. And uh, we're getting there. This is also, by the way, exactly what you do when you make macaroni and cheese from scratch. So. If anyone ever brings like homemade macaroni, this is uh, the proper way to make the cheese sauce. You just cook noodles on the side, drain them, cool them off, pour them into like a baking dish and then pour this cheese over it and you got mac and cheese. So if you ever want to mess around with different cheeses for macaroni and cheese, this would be how you do that. All right, that is nice and cheesy. It's smooth. I might smooth it out one more time, just a tiny bit, a little bit more milk. So I ended up using, I said eight ounces, I probably used about 10, 10 to 11 ounces of milk. Perfect, now. Cheese has salt in it, but I'm gonna season it with a little bit of salt. I'm gonna give it a touch of cayenne. Just to give it that nacho cheese flavor. I thought about dicing up jalapenos and throwing, in, throwing those in here too. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. All right, that's it, we're done. Let's plate it up.
All right, what do you think of that? We did it, we're at the ballpark. Got nachos. Let me do one try. Mmm. That's really perfect. Um, the cayenne with the medium cheddar, it really gives it that kind of back of the throat nacho heat that you get with uh, ballpark nachos, where it's cheese, but it almost has the slightest bit of, of pepper, or in this case, cayenne in there. Like I said, you could have also diced up some jalapenos and stirred those in as well. Um, this is really great. Uh, I did it with my jalapenos that I make. I would encourage you to do the same. And I also posted a video a long time ago of tomatillo salsa with homemade chips. So I would love to see you do the trifecta and make the chips and make the jalapenos and make the cheese sauce and have a ballpark experience completely homemade in your home. Um, Adam and Cooper, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for the recommendation. This is very, very good. And I'm glad that I was uh, bullied into trying it. Have a good one. Talk to you next time.